Hello everyone and welcome to another Coffee and Critique Patreon special. Uh, for this month, anyone who pledges to our 52 Frames Patreon campaign will be featured in an exclusive Coffee and Critique. So far, 18 of you have pledged, so thanks so much. A quick shout out to Jake, Cindy, Sue, Kat, Camille, Irene, Anne, Bridget, Heather, Michelle, Sylvan, Stuart, Gilly, Joy, and a couple of upgrades for you people that were already contributors but you upped your pledges. Laney, who upgraded to the $10 level, the t-shirt level, Anne as well upgraded to the t-shirt level. Jeremy, you upgraded to the $50 level. Thank you so much for your generosity and for your call out to help out with this special contest that we're having. And Donna for your upgraded pledge to $20. Everyone that's pledged to the $10 level for this month also will receive a special critique from me going over all of your photos from 2016. And everyone that's pledged so far at the $5 level will be entered into a raffle to win a t-shirt as well. And a quick update on our Patreon campaign, I now changed the pledges to a weekly amount, which makes a lot more sense for our project. So you can now pledge for as little as $1 a week, which will also get you into our next screencast critique. So head on over to patreon.com slash 52 frames and show your support. Okay, so let's get into it. We have 18 of you and I will critique these in the order in which you submitted. So first we have Camille Hill. Camille, who actually was our guest picker for our 52 Picks album. Thank you, Camille. I noticed this uh, photo when I was going through the album. Really interesting. I really like the, the dynamic setup that you have here. I really like the high key element. The first thing I noticed was the scene itself, the setup itself. It looks like a boxing match or something. I watch a lot of UFC myself, so maybe that's just what's fresh in my mind. Uh, but then I looked at the stance of this guy, and I'm not sure if it looks like he's getting hit or it looks like he's maybe kneeling down on one knee. So I was a little bit confused by the story. Uh, but photographically, I think the biggest critique that I have is the noise. Um, I'll zoom in so you can see very, very apparent noise. Now, obviously I'm zooming into 400% and that's not really what you should be doing, but I'm zooming in just so that you can see clearly what I see at 100% or rather at the full size here. I see this noise, it's quite apparent and I'm not sure why it's present because if we look at your EXIF data over here, we're seeing that you're shooting with a D5500, or a D5000 rather, uh, at ISO 400. So you shouldn't see very much noise. Um, your specs look okay. I think perhaps you really amped it up in post-processing. You did something to introduce the noise, and um, I think it affects your image at this point. I also see that it's not exactly black and white. It looks a bit bluish to me. Let's see if I lower the saturation. Yeah, I see you have like a bluish tint. Um, doesn't really bother me, just pointing it out. But other than that, a really unique image and a very interesting submission. Okay, next we have Heather. Heather, a really cool scene, rather abstract photo. My critique for this one, I think overall you're kind of pushing the edges too much photographically. Everything is a bit too exaggerated. The first thing I notice is the heavy, heavy contrast, the blown out highlights of the white here and the overly saturated blue. Let's, let's open this up in camera raw so we can get into some of those details. First of all, if we clip on our highlight clip warning, which is the letter O in Adobe Camera Raw, or the J key for those of you using Lightroom. By the way, uh, when I do these coffee and critiques, and generally when I edit my raw photos before going into Photoshop, I use what's called Adobe Camera Raw, which is this dialog that you're seeing here in front of you. I find that it's much more fluid and speedy than Lightroom, but essentially, 
all of these widgets, dials, sliders, and the like are found in Lightroom. It's virtually identical. They're just different layouts. So if we switch on the highlight clip warning, we see a lot of red, meaning all of this white is what's called blown out, meaning the data is completely lost or probably completely lost. And it means your exposure was just a bit too high. If we brought the highlight slider down now, we would just be making the image a bit grayer and muddy. Uh, maybe if we were working with a raw file here, we actually could retrieve some of that data in the highlights. But overall, looking at this image, that's my first feeling is that it's a bit too hot. And it, it's not just picking on some kind of small technical thing in the photo. It's more that when the viewer is looking at a photo in general and there are blacks in the photo that are just too dark where you're missing data and you can't see it. Or there are whites in the photo where it's just too white and it's missing data and it's just completely absent. The human brain feels like it's missing out on something. And on some level, one could look at this and feel like, well, I'm missing out on all this detail. The photo just looks in a way distorted. Now, obviously with snow, which is a very difficult condition to shoot in, the viewer can understand a bit that it's a blown out situation and maybe it wouldn't bother somebody as much, but I felt it important to point it out. What you could do in the future is properly expose a little bit lower, meaning expose for the highlights in a situation like this. And then in the post-processing, you can just raise your shadows if you're losing data in the shadows. Or you shoot in RAW and you may be able to lower the highlight slider and bring back some of that data. Lastly, I would just lower some of this vibrance or saturation because the color is a bit too punchy. The contrast as well is a bit too punchy. If we lower the contrast, now this is just a guide. I am editing your final JPEG, so it's not gonna be perfect, but if you look at the before and after, what I think I've done a little bit is give the photo a little bit more realism. To me, I feel that this look, aside from the sky here, I think the car at least and the general scene looks more realistic, which I think a photograph should lean towards the more realistic. I think it's more of a connection. I think there are pieces and parts of the photograph that you should exaggerate, that will give the photo a wow factor, that will bring certain aspects of reality and enhance it to a viewer's eye. But in general, I think especially us as framers, I know for myself when I was uh, an amateur in my first few years of taking photographs, in general, I think we lean towards the less authentic scenario of really too much boosted contrasts and overly saturated HDRE type effects, which are fun and could look cool. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I am just offering my professional opinion that I think at the end of the day, when you go through the process, you'll find that the photos that are more realistic will ultimately connect to more people. I hope that was helpful. Okay. Okay, moving on to Anne. Anne Dubitsky, a longtime framer. It's so nice to see your photos week to week and see the improvement that you've made. This is a really nice macro shot uh, of a flower. Macro in general, you need a lot more light than you would think uh, because of the way macro works. And the one thing that I notice here, and I think I'll re be repeating this in the screencast, is the eye is not the eye is drawn to the brightest part of the image and what I think what should be the focal length here, uh, the focus point rather of the subject is not the brightest part of the image. So if I took a brush here and I just raise the shadows and the whites a bit and maybe even just will slide the exposure just to be dramatic about it so you guys can see it on your end. I'll show you the before and after. I think simply these shadows were getting lost in the detail and I think the middle of the flower is where you want the eye to be drawn. Uh, you can go a step further and make another brush here and just lower the highlights 
and the whites on these whites, not to make them dark, but just to balance out the image a little bit more so that when we look at this flower, the, the layers are more balanced and our eyes are focused more to the center. I'll show you the before and the after. And I think this is a more balanced photo and it's something to look out for. If you wanted to do this in camera, uh, you can use reflectors, you can even use external light and you can raise those shadows where you need them, which are especially sensitive in a macro environment. Okay, Bridget Mayfield, a very cool photo here. I actually was looking at it and trying to figure out how you did this. I uh, had to go to your uh, Facebook submission and read some of the comments and I see that you explained that you dangled this guy from a rope and then held the crystal ball and then photoshopped your hand out and the rope and then inverted the image so that it wouldn't be upside down which is a lot of steps and i think it's a very cool effect that you have here um very quickly i think my critiques are similar to the ones previous where your highlights are a bit too hot um i think if we took a brush uh, let's see if we could do this quickly lower the highlights and the shadows you know, because we are missing some of the detail here in our elf. Let's put on a, a dehaze and a clarity, and let's bring some of that whites back there. Okay, quick, quick before and after. Before and after, just bringing back some detail to this cute little guy. And I would even apply this to some of the more blown out parts of your image. And again, a very difficult environment to shoot. If we show the clipping warning, we're going to see some clips all over. Actually, to my eye, it looks like it's clipped down here as well, but it must be just shy of that because it's not showing up. Um, but in general, I would expose just a tad lower. Very hard to see uh, on your viewfinder in an environment like this, which is when it's a good time to pull up your histogram. I also think that your blues are a little bit too hot. I would go to your uh, saturation slider and just pull that back a smidgen. And if we show before and after, I think I rescued some of those highlights and balanced out a little bit of that contrast. So the photo looks a little bit clear, but all in all, a really, really clever shot. Well done, Bridget. Joy, what a nice candid moment you have of Santa here. Uh, my first reaction is that it looks like it was shot with a phone. Um, looking up this model number and I see it is not a phone, it's a point and shoot. I think point and shoots will have a similar drawback to phones, meaning similar weaknesses to phones, and that's low light situations. So when you're shooting, let's say, inside of a mall, wherever this may be, in a low light situation, you have to realize that you're gonna come up with uh, noise like we see here and generally a less clear picture. My other critique here is that it looks like you may have a bit of camera shake. Uh, we have your shutter speed here at one over 13, but your focal length equivalent is at least what shows up here in the EXIF two, over 200 millimeters, which is quite zoomed in. So it seems like you zoomed in a lot and perhaps your camera couldn't quite catch up to, uh, to that focal length in terms of what the shutter speed should have been, which perhaps added to the fact that the photo does look a little bit grainy, a little bit less sharp. Uh, I think a more important critique though is like Anne's flower, the to me, the main part of the subject, which is the subject's face in this example, is actually darker than the rest of the photo. If we take a brush here and just bring up the shadows and the whites and just paint on here, I believe that's doing this guy some justice. Now, it's still not the brightest part of the image. If I went and, of course, again, we're on a JPEG here, so... 
I'm just making the whites gray. I'm not really highlighting, I'm not really rescuing the data from the highlights, but for the sake of just showing the difference in the example, if we went around and just lowered and muted the really bright parts of the image here, I think overall it's a bit more balanced and we're seeing his face a bit more. It's not sharp, obviously, due to everything that I mentioned before, but if we look at the before and the after, I think it's at least doing it some justice. The last thing I would do is also lower the saturation because it's just a bit too hot on the reds. Reds in general, you got to be careful about. Reds will um, pop, as I say sometimes. Reds will saturate quicker than other colors, so something to be wary about. Uh, here's your before and after, and I hope that can give you a bit of a better understanding of things to look out for. Okay, Sylvan. Before I actually read your description in the photo, what I was going to say... It was the first thing that I noticed was that you do have your subjects really well placed in the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds, as we know, if we drew a tic-tac-toe board here, a grid of two lines horizontally and vertically, that is, your two subjects fall directly on the crisscross points, which in general is a good starting rule of composition. Uh, I didn't know what your second challenge was for the two challenges combined. I realize now I never even mentioned what the theme was for uh, what the challenge was for this week. It was two challenges combined. Uh, but I see here that you wrote down high key as well. I think you ticked off those marks and I think these subjects are very well exposed and I think they're sharp as well. I think Taking a step back, my critique for this is I'm left with, at least me personally, wondering what exactly the story is. Perhaps this is a soldier uh, that represents war and this little plush doll with the love me heart is representing love. Um, I think the subject matter could have told a bit more of a story or maybe a bit more of an interesting angle. It's a beautiful high key but I don't feel it's necessarily a product photograph, as in product photography, uh, or if it's telling a very clear story, or maybe I'm just missing it. But to me, that would be my feedback for that shot. Okay, Lainey, this is a really lovely image, and one of the photos that caught my eye when I was going through the album. And one of the things I noticed, and this is a great trick if you want to see how things are lit, is that you used ring light. If you zoom into your subject's eyes and check out the catch lights, not only can you see what type of flash was used, you can see how many flashes were used and you can see the direction of the flash. So here we see a ring light, which is a circular flash, a circular modifier that is very good at portrait photography because they deliver a very flattering, even type of lighting. Uh, and what I mean by that is you're not seeing any harsh shadows. Usually you would see some harsh shadows under the nose or the nose would create a shadow itself. And here the shadows are very subtle and very soft. And unlike some of the other photos that we've seen here, specifically the eyes and the face, your main parts of the photo are also the brightest part of the photo. You enhance that even more by having your model wear this furry it look i guess that's part of the hood on the coat and a very dark coat which maybe could have a little bit more detail in it but not too terrible and that really naturally frames this subject which is the brightest part of the image the soft lighting adds to the flattering portrait that you have here and all in all i think this is very well lit very well shot and very natural coloring as well so really nice job Laney. Irene, really lovely black and white shot. And I think this is nicely exposed. Again, very difficult conditions in the snow. Really nice clarity on the leaf. Uh, not much to say about this. I think you did a really nice job. I like the balance between the highlights and the shadows. 
In fact, I'm willing to bet if we turned on our clipping warning, we won't get any warning at all. This is the highlights, this is the shadows, which means that your data is evenly distributed. Your lights and shadows are within the realm of what your camera could handle and our eyes are seeing all the detail and it's, it's a really lovely image. I would put that on a wall. Donna, a very sweet image. I'm not able to see any of your EXIF data, but this does look to me like some of the others that it was shot with a phone. Again, I, I don't when I say that, I don't mean that in a bad way, but what's important to get are the weaknesses of shooting with a phone. And that, namely, number one, shooting indoors, which is a low light situation. If you took your phone and you shot outdoors, like this camera, let's say, like this photo, let's say, you're gonna get a much clearer picture. You're not gonna introduce as much noise. I can't really tell if your shutter speed was too slow, but it does look like the photo is a bit out of focus or blurred. And ultimately, I do think it would have been a nicer story if it were a little bit cleaner. I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. The details are a bit difficult to see. And again, that's some of the challenges that you're gonna come across when shooting on a phone indoors. Assuming this was shot with a phone, I don't see your exit. I'm just making an assumption. Uh, we have Cat. Also, very similar feedback to this one. I'm also not seeing any EXIF data, and I would assume, actually, let's see if we can see if you're shooting with a phone. I think I see you there. What, what are you holding? Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's you there. Um, but again, a lot of noise, as you can see, a lot of grain and extremely low light. I'm not seeing that your even your overhead is, is on here. Perhaps that's a window behind you. Uh, you could have taken this to the window. You could have taken this outside and your camera would have done a much better job at uh, documenting this lovely subject which I do think is very nicely placed, very nicely uh, composed. So I'd be curious if you retook this shot and took it outside and then we can look at a side by side. I'm curious to see what that would look like. Okay, Stuart, very cool picture. I really like the drama, I like the action, I like the black and white. I do think that you struggled with the exposure and you did the best that you could here. Uh, you're shooting with a uh, K10D Pentax. That was my first camera. It was a K100 um, F5.6, which may have been the max on your lens. A 200 millimeter focal length and you're at ISO 1600. What this means is that you had your camera, you were in extremely low light, you have your ISO at 1600, which is probably the max that you would wanna take that camera. You're zoomed way in, and ideally if you're at 200 millimeters, you should be shooting with your shutter speed at one over 200 or more, or faster, one over 400, etc. cetera. Uh, that's like a general rule, is one over your focal length as a little cheat sheet. One over 60 is probably too, too slow, and I am seeing some slight blur here on aspects of your subject. But again, I, I think you did the best you could. I mean, that this is, you're pushing your camera to the max and I think you exposed it as well as you could. Now, if you look at the histogram, we are very much in the shadows and I do think you could have upped it a little bit more, but obviously we're gonna be introducing some more grain with that. I don't like the vignette. I think it's a bit too heavy and if I reversed it here, that's not even enough to reverse it. If I took a brush here and just amped up the shadows just a, a little bit, that's such a heavy vignette that I'm not even... All right, took, took away some of the vignette there. Let's see before and after. You see, you see how strong the vignette is. We're not really seeing the whole picture. 
it almost feels like you're uh, squinting your eyes and here <laughs> your eyes are a bit more open. So while vignettes are cool, I think you need to be uh, a bit responsible with how much you use a vignette, when to use a vignette. I used to think that you're supposed to slap on a vignette on every single photo, which by the way, I read once in a blog post and I was like, yeah, definitely that's a good idea. It's sometimes a good idea, it's sometimes not a good idea. Again, it comes back to that very first thing that I said in this screencast, the more realistic your photo is, ultimately that's the, the, the most the, the viewers will connect to what you're shooting. So if you have a super strong vignette, it just it's less natural. It's just as simple as that. But really cool job, Stuart. And I really like this abstract low key. Uh, one thing that I've critiqued low keys in the past is that just because the shadows can be super black, and if we put on our highlight, our shadow clip warning, that is, you'll see we have a lot of completely crushed blacks here, which is fine in this case. Uh, but your shadows don't have, your, sorry, your highlights, however, don't have to suffer. And if I just raise the highlights here a bit, we just see this detail coming to life. And if I raise some of the, some of the whites, we're not affecting the shadows. We're not affecting the low key. In fact, I'll come here and I'll just bring down this part of the neck that because of that tweak that I made, made it a bit too hot. Let's just bring that down. Oh, that, that is nicer. Just a little bit less. Okay. So we'll show you before and after. This is the before and this is the after. I didn't change the, the notion of what you were shooting. It's still a dark, brooding, dramatic, kind of abstract, low key, zoomed in shot, right? Uh, but it looks almost like we're, we're turning up the lights a little bit and we're showing what you were already showing, but just showing a little bit better, a little bit clearer. So when you're taking a low key, remember, it doesn't mean your highlights need to be so low that they're in that mid gray area. Your highlights could still be highlights and the rest of the shot, uh, the rest of the frame can be nice and dark. Okay, moving right along. Sue, this is a really good exposure, but I actually think unlike the photos that we looked at in the beginning, this is a bit too dark. Uh, maybe I would just amp up the, the uh, exposure slider just a bit. It also looks a bit blue, uh, so I'd maybe bring that white balance slider a little bit to the right to warm it up. Um, I think this is also shot with a phone, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm not gonna get into it, but the EXIF here doesn't make any sense. Uh, it looks like your camera or your phone was completely trying to catch up to whatever settings that you had on it by having a whopping one over almost 6,000 shutter, which I don't know is possible on most DSLRs, which a, with a wide open aperture, I'm not gonna get into why that doesn't really make sense right now, but I think it was, I think you shot this in a very challenging situation and I think you did the best you could with the gear that you had. And I really do like the abstract composition that you found. So good eye on that. Michelle. Another holiday, a lot of holiday spirit I'm noticing now, actually, <laughs> now that we're getting to this photo. Oh, and there's more in the next one. I like that you can always tell what's going on in the world when you look at the uh, albums. Nice to see. This is shot with a D7100 Nikon. So mid-level DSLR and you're at ISO 400, much clearer than some of the other indoor shots that we saw previously and that's that really comes down to gear right i'm not that i'm not saying you should go out and buy a mid-level dslr i'm just saying know your gear so if you have gear that doesn't shoot well no light take it outside uh this to me is still a little bit on the low end we, we see the histogram is very heavy on the left side meaning the shadow side and i would just like move the the whites up a bit, the shadows up a bit. I'm just gonna move the exposure so that you guys can see it a bit clearer on your end. And that is that. I think it's uh, it's an interesting abstract. 
I think it's nice. I think it's clear and sharp and glittery and colorful enough that makes it interesting. I do want to critique that, like, what's the story here? Maybe we should have gone closer or further away, but no, I think it's a cool abstract. I, re I like the colors and things that you got going on here. Okay, Jeremy. A very interesting photo, and I didn't quite see it when I first looked at it. Uh, first of all, this is a very popular issue that comes up with people shooting on all kinds of gear, and that is uh, incorrect white balance, where your photo is a bit too yellow when you're inside or sometimes a bit too blue when you're outside, and that just means that you're telling your camera, unlike the human eye, needs to be told what the lighting situation is in order for it to adjust. So what you're basically telling your camera is what is the pure white. In this case, I think the door over here is more of an accurate white. And we'll just bring that back a touch. Uh, the saturation also is a bit too much, so I'm gonna lower that. And although this looks a bit blue or green, here we'll move it a bit more, it's still, it's, it's a bit more accurate. Maybe if we were working with a raw file here, not a JPEG, then we wouldn't be losing some of that data as well. I'll, I'll move it a bit over to the purple. Maybe that'll help. All right, maybe maybe that's a good combination there. Uh, the other thing is I didn't even realize that you're over here on the bottom left part of the image. Let me just bring you up over there. Okay, there you are. So again, very heavy vignette. So I'm gonna undo your vignette and I'm gonna raise the exposure where you had it super dark, okay? So putting aside the fact that there are obviously clarity issues that come into play when we're doing this on a JPEG, I can now see, I think it's a more interesting image. Uh, you have multiple exposures here of you taking a photo, which is very meta, uh, but in your original image here, it kind of got lost in the vignette. So again, think about balance. Think about what the story is that you're telling. Is this another arm here? I wonder what's happening there. Maybe that was another, another Jeremy there that you cut out. So moving right along, we got three left. Gilly, you have black and white minimalism and a different perspective. Uh, I think... This is a very entertaining shot. Definitely caught my attention when I was looking at it in the album. I think it's a very cool abstract and macro and high key. So if you wanted to throw in some more challenges there. Um, so well done and way to get everyone's attention. Way to get the uh, Facebook Facebook uh, censor police uh, all up in arms. So thanks for that. <laughs> very nice insight. Jake, Jake, this was our audience award winner, if I'm not mistaken. It had the most likes of any other photo once the likes were tallied after the album was posted. This definitely caught my eye when looking through the album. A really wonderful perspective, very cool angle, really nice lighting, what looks like natural window lighting on the subject. Beautiful smile, of course and a very interesting pose. Uh, a few things to critique here. If we go back to our rule of thirds here, I think this, which one could argue is the main point of the, of the photo here, obviously the main focus point should be your subject's face, specifically your subject's eyes, which you do have very much in the third. Uh, for me though, I think that this holding the foot in the air especially because it's the brightest part of this image, I would argue that that is the main part of the photo, the main focus, and that the face would be, let's say, number two. If this were moved a little bit more towards this point, again, I'm not saying that you have to put your main uh, parts of the image on the cross point. It's just a guideline, but I'm adding this overlay just to give you a bit more of a visual understanding. I'm going to take it off. Uh, without the overlay, I just felt like this should have been a little bit more towards the center of the image. And the foot here 
is cropped. And honestly, if the foot wasn't cropped, this is a definitely, in my eyes, a top three, one of the top photos, in my opinion, of this album. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> you got to think of a lot of things. It's tough to get everything in. Uh, but th that's my main critique for this photo. And in addition to that, I am also seeing some noise here. And it looks like you're shooting ISO 3200 on a Nikon D610. So, okay, not as much noise as we would see if you were shooting on a more entry-level D5500 and the like. But, you know, ISO 3200, you're going to get noise. What you could do if you didn't already uh, in Lightroom or ACR, you can go to your noise reduction slider and just slide that over. You are going to lose some clarity and some detail in the process, but I do think that for this image, it looks nicer with less noise uh, and a little bit less detail as well. Really nice, really nice image. I would definitely be proud of it. A really lovely photo. Last but not least, we have Cindy, another photo that definitely caught my eye when looking through the album originally. A beautiful macro, abstract, really, really lovely photo. I don't have any kind of negative critique for this photo. I love the beautiful bokeh that you have going on here. It doesn't bother me that it's super bright. It doesn't bother me that it's peachy. Uh, I think it's a really nice composition that you crafted here. And this too would look good on a wall. So if you're gonna print, I say go print. Guys, this was a lot of fun to go through your photos. Thank you so much specifically to you guys for the support. It means the world, you have no idea. And I am so looking forward to 2017. As always, you can find all the latest news and updates at 52frames.com. If you don't know what 52 frames is, I don't know why you just watched this 30 minutes of video, but you can go to 52frames.com slash get started and sign up for our free weekly photo challenge project. And now is a good time to start as any. Thanks so much, you guys. Until next time, happy shooting. Hi, my name is Yosef Ades, and I started 52 Frames back in 2011 as a personal passion project of mine for me and my friends to get better at photography through a guided weekly photo challenge. Little did I realize at just how much this would impact thousands of people from all over the world, literally changing the way they perceive their world. I can't count how many letters of gratitude I've received from people in the project thanking me for all that the project has done for them and for enabling a creative space in their otherwise busy lives. For 2016, I'd like to take this project to the next level. I have spent countless hours and my own money over the last five years in making this project something really special, which is why I'm now coming to you for support. I'd like to invite you to become a patron of 52 Frames. In order to keep this project running, from server costs, the emails I send out, the forms we use, it costs me hundreds of dollars every month. But for this year and beyond, I want to do even more. For those of you that know me, know that video is my passion. And I really want to devote more time to creating fun, educational, dynamic video that will help you, the photographer, become better at your craft. Becoming a patron is very simple. All you need to do is pledge any dollar amount each month and you will have full access to the 52 Frames Patreon page as well as your personal footing in making this project become something truly special. In addition to that, I have some exciting stretch goals and that's to hire developers to build a fully functional website to host our rather large albums off of Facebook and introduce great functionality like follow, sort, and filter, not to mention the sponsorships and prizes we can give out with a proper budget. 52 Frames is and always will be free to participate. Please help me in continuing to offer this project to creatives around the world. Thank you so much for being a patron. Whether it's a dollar a week, a dollar a month, or just helping to spread out this message, I so much appreciate you helping and fulfilling my vision and spreading joy and creativity to the world.